Florida is a great place to live. If you're planning to move here, there are certain things that you should never ever do in Florida though. Here are my top 10 of what not to do in Florida. Number one, don't assume that there are no alligators in every body of fresh water in Florida. Alligators can be found in lakes and other bodies of water in Florida. The rule of thumb is expect at least one alligator per lake. The bigger the lake, the likelier it is that many alligators are calling at their home. Though alligator attacks are not common, be cautious in and around lakes as attacks do occur. And this goes without saying, do not feed the alligators. Number two, lightning. Do not seek shelter in an open field, metal structure, or under a tree. Florida is known as the lightning capital of the US. We have a lot of thunderstorms in the summer and chances are you will get caught in one of them while being outside. If you're caught in a lightning storm, you will want to get inside as quickly as possible. If you can't get indoors, you do not want to be in an open field or seek shelter under a tree, metal structure, a body of water, or other tall objects. Instead, find a low point and get down, crouch down as low as possible. Number three, don't go outside without sunscreen. So Florida is situated closer to the equator than many other states in the US, which makes Florida sun very strong, even during the winter days. If you're going to be outdoors, do not forget to put on sunscreen. You will want to protect your skin from the rays as sun damage can occur fast, even on cloudy days. So skin experts recommend sunscreen that is at least 30 SPF and broad spectrum, which protects the skin from both UVA and UVB rays. Number four, don't just visit the beaches or the theme parks. So Florida has so much more to offer than just the beautiful beaches and theme parks. Explore one of the thousands of hiking and biking trails, take a trip to the Everglades, swim with manatees in Crystal River, visit the Dali Museum in St. Petersburg, or for some history, stay in St. Augustine, the nation's oldest continuously inhabited city. So there's so many other things to take advantage of depending on where you're planning to stay or move to. So do your research and go explore. Number five, don't step on a fire ant hill. A fire ant mount is a little hill that can exist in lawns and other types of properties that are generally in open and sunny areas. These mounts can easily be mistaken for dirt. When stepped on, the fire ants will rise to the top and bite anything nearby. My friend actually told me about them when I first moved here, but quite honestly, I didn't believe how mean these tiny little ants can actually be. Until one day I was walking my dog and I actually stepped in one of those ant hills. Immediately, the ants came storming to the top of the hill and crawled right up my foot. I got bitten several times because I had sandals on. Since then, I've been so cautious because the bites are actually quite painful. So watch out and also take care of your children and small animals. Animals can actually die from too many ant bites. Number six, don't walk your pets on hot outdoor surfaces. So the outside temperature is not always reflective of the temperature of the ground. Be careful when walking your pet on hot surfaces during the warm weather. According to a study published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, at 86 degrees Fahrenheit, the asphalt temperature rises to 135 degrees. At 87 degrees, the asphalt temperature is about 143 degrees. So your dog will not be able to tell you that it's too hot. It is recommended that you test the surface with your own hands by placing the back of your hand on the surface for seven seconds. And if it's too hot for you, it will be too hot for your pet. Number seven, don't leave your animals or children in a parked car, even in the winter. It is easy to underestimate how hot it can get in a car when the outside temperature seems to be not so bad. So for example, in 78 degree weather, a car in direct sunlight can get to be over 100 degrees very fast. Staying in a hot car, even for a few minutes, can lead to heat stroke and death. It is also against the law, just so you know, to leave your child under the age of six in a vehicle for more than 15 minutes. Number eight, don't forget to hydrate. Drink lots of water, especially in the summer. Florida is one of the hottest and most humid states in the US. 
So it's easy to forget to drink water when going to the beach and otherwise enjoying the outdoors, but staying hydrated is one of the most important things you can do to stay happy and healthy in the Florida climate. Experts tell us not to wait to drink water until we feel thirsty. I typically drink about eight glasses of water a day. You can look up how much water you should be drinking, which will depend on your weight and your height. Number nine, don't go to the Everglades in the summer if you don't like mosquitoes. The Everglades is a 1.5 million acre wetland in the southern part of Florida. And a must visit if you enjoy wildlife, seeing birds, alligators, and other species in the wilderness. But if you're allergic to mosquitoes or just dislike them in general, then you will not want to visit the Everglades in the summer. The summers in Florida are very rainy. Mosquitoes breed in still standing water and can become a real nuisance in the summer, especially in the Everglades. Their active breeding season is May through September, which is the worst month to visit the Everglades. Number 10. Don't forget to learn the Florida hurricane procedures. The official hurricane season starts from June 1st to November 30th, but the peak is typically from August through October, with the worst month being September. A hurricane will brush through Florida every few years, so you will want to learn hurricane safety procedures before one actually comes along. Depending on how bad a hurricane is predicted to be, you may have to board up your windows so you even find shelter in a structurally sound place. The more you know what to do beforehand, the better prepared you will be when you're faced with the first hurricane. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it, subscribe to this channel, and leave comments below. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. Until next time, take care.